Last night in Seattle, the police retreated and surrendered the East Police Precinct to the far left. They now have an area they call the Capitol Hill Free Zone, claiming it is autonomous from the rest of the city. The police are trying to save face, in my opinion, saying that this is a de-escalation tactic and they've put fire retardant in the building so they can't actually burn it down. But the activists say that's not true. They left the door unlocked and they've taken over the whole area, seven block, a seven city block radius. They've now said that they've taken up arms and there's rumors circulating that there are going to be armed far leftists guarding the barricades in what they call the Capitol Hill free zone. Now, this is a bit disconcerting. But there is kind of a lighter side to it because it really does look like these people are just LARPing, live action role play. They're referring to the police as the regime, and it seems all just very, very silly. But you know what? I'm not going to be too optimistic. Just because these people seem stupid doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. In fact, they are quite dangerous. And this has been an escalation of what we've seen happening over the past several years. Activists have repeatedly tried taking over certain areas of the city, and Seattle keeps giving in and failing. And now we're seeing in Fort Worth, they're dropping all charges against those arrested for rioting. In New York City, they're refusing to charge people who are arrested for protesting. Now, in regards to the protest, as I've stated before, you have a right to protest. So that one I kind of shrug at. But the real issue is the dispar- is the uh, unequal treatment, the unequal treatment of people under the law. Churchgoers are being fined. Churches aren't, aren't allowed to hold uh, worship ceremonies. So you now have the government actively supporting one ideology while restricting another. That you cannot do. There is some lighter news in all of this. While we are seeing some jurisdictions bow down, in Minneapolis, some moron who kicked a barrel into the fire at the, uh, at, the, at the third precinct, they caught him. And the look on his face and his mugshot, well, you're going to laugh when you see it. But it's really sad, man. I know some people might laugh and say, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. But I looked up this guy's Facebook profile and he was just some young, dumb, you know, dude who was watching the news and reading all about this stuff. He went out for a protest that got too rowdy. He kicked a few barrels now his life is over and he is facing federal charges. I really do feel like we're seeing a, a worrisome escalation in the propaganda and the tactics being used by the far left. So I want to make sure I make this clear. While we may laugh at these people for LARPing, for having no idea what's really going on, there comes a point when the government start bowing down out of fear and then the LARP becomes real life. Don't underestimate these lunatics when they take up arms and start barricading off streets in U.S. cities. Now, I do believe the National Guard and the military could come and crush these in a a moment's notice. That's why it's worrisome they're allowed to keep growing. And it's also worrisome that there are businesses here that are being told to disaffiliate. This is authoritarianism. And the fact that they're allowing it to me is rather shocking. But let's get started with the first story. Quote, they've given us the precinct. Seattle police backs away and protesters take back pine. Now, this story is loaded with framing devices that I want to give you my breakdown on. But ultimately, all I can really tell you is do your research on this one. If you trust me, if you think my assessment, it makes sense. Well, there you go. But at any rate, you got to read more sources because I'm going to give you my personal breakdown of how they're trying to frame things. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give. There is also a P.O. box to send stuff, but the best thing you can do is share this video. I'm competing with all these big mainstream media companies that get propped up and put on the front page of YouTube. I don't get that luxury. I don't have a special section like they do, and they, they slant recommendations in their favor. But one thing I do have is your support. So if you just share the video, you know the spiel. It really, really does help. Otherwise, if you just want to watch, subscribe like, hit the notification bell. Let's read. From KUOW.org, the Seattle Police Department announced Monday afternoon that the barricade near the East Precinct where officers have used pepper spray, tear gas, and flashbang grenades on demonstrators for eight days would be removed. During a press briefing, Police Chief Carmen Best said Seattle police would try something new. We are not going to evacuate or abandon the East Precinct, she said. We will be hardening the East Precinct facility by boarding up the exterior windows and applying fire retardant to the building exterior and installing fencing. Best said demonstrators should be able to walk freely around Capitol Hill. This is an exercise in trust and de-escalation. On Monday evening, a protester addressed the crowd, quote, they've given us the precinct and we've got to be smart and we have to work together and we have to remain peaceful and we have to remain strong. This is the message that we are trying to deliver. 
that if they give us the precinct, we're not going to try to destroy it. We're not going to do what they want us to do. We're not going to do what they want us to do. We're going to take care of it because this is our street. The change comes after more than 12,000 complaints about, po- about the police response to the most, mostly peaceful demonstrations. Seattle police has said officers have, been, have had to use pepper spray, tear gas, and flashbangs because demonstrators had hurled bottles, rocks, and used incendiary devices against the police. Now, in my experience in the, in the Northwest and the West of this country, that is an extremely common tactic from Antifa. Low-grade fireworks, mortar shell type explosives, and improvised explosives made from plastic bottles. I've seen all of these things. But I'll tell you this right now. They're claiming they didn't abandon the police department. Semantics. They literally did. And according to somebody who was live streaming on the scene, they didn't put any fire retardant up. So, you know, look, you can look at it different ways. Maybe the police have lost. Maybe that's really what it is. I think what we're seeing now is the complete demoralization of police. In uh, New York, for instance, they put up in each borough, they're going to put up a Black Lives Matter Avenue representing the protests and the rioters. They're dropping charges against these people in many jurisdictions. And the police are now being told straight up, we're not going to support you on this one. To make it worse, in New York City, we have a big update, and I'll get to the story in a second. The cop who shoved one of the protesters is facing charges. Now, I honestly think he does deserve some kind of reprimand or charge for shoving this woman. I don't know if you saw the video, but she's like yelling at him, and then he just shoves her and she falls down. He's going to get charged for that. That's fine, right? However, if the, if the district attorney isn't going to be prosecuting these protesters, what do you think the police are going to think when they're like, you mean to tell me that I face charges and they don't, that they can get in my face and scream and I can't do anything about it. And even if we arrest them for breaking the law, they will just be released. That will bring about demoralization. But let's read more because this gets interesting. They say, City council members on Monday said it was unclear how many of these had actually been used, citing evidence of one candle thrown. Many people are also calling for defunding the department. Later in the afternoon, Omari Salisbury depicted the scene on his live stream. He described it as a view we haven't seen for eight days. Salisbury, a journalist, said that earlier in the day, Seattle police were building a fence across Pine Street. A few hours later, they stopped working on the fence and began moving out of the East Precinct. We saw moving trucks in and out officers moving bags. I know that the city is calling it a reduction in footprint. It's impossible for me to say there's nobody in this building, but I don't think there's anybody home. He said they had had expected a fireproofing foam to be sprayed onto the East Precinct, but that no such fireproofing appears to to have happened. He said Pine Street for the first time in eight days is open. But lest anyone feel that the city would sleep easy tonight, Salisbury said that many people were wearing bulletproof vests because of credible threats made from white supremacists. The threats felt much more real after the shooting on Sunday when a 31-year-old Nicholas Fernandez sped his car into the crowd and shot a man, 27, uh, 27 27-year-old Daniel Daniel Gregory. Gregory was in uh, satisfactory condition at Harborview. As the police left, the protesters claimed the area and barricaded it themselves. We are seeing quite a few bulletproof vests out here, Salisbury said. A lot of protesters out here before not armed who are now armed. It's a different situation. And then he signed off to get a bulletproof vest for himself. Around 10 p.m., two other live streams showed protesters wearing body armor. One protester called for people with guns and know-how to go to the barricades in case there was a threat from white supremacists known as the Proud Boys. Let's break down some of this framing. A car did not speed toward the crowd and then, you know, just randomly shoot somebody. A, uh, a man who is a Latino turned down the street People started throwing things at his vehicle. He sped up a little bit before slowing down, allowing protesters to run up to his car and bang on it. A group of protesters are trying to pop open his passenger side door. Another man reaches in and punches him in the face face by his own admission. Fernandez then reached for his firearm and shot the man in the arm, exited the vehicle after it stalled and turned himself into the police. Some accounts say that the man reaching into the vehicle, punching him, was actually trying to grab the weapon. I don't think that matters. What matters is by any reasonable framing, this guy was not charging in to go after a protest. It seems to me that these far left extremists are using the Proud Boys as an excuse to take up arms because they don't want to say they're going up against the police. They have the police precinct. The police have abandoned it. They said they didn't. Semantics. They all left and the protesters claimed the area. And we have, an Im- we have a map of the area. 
where they've made some rather silly and crude drawings, which you will find, in my opinion, quite hilarious. First, here's an image from one of the entrances of the Capitol Hill free zone. It says, you're entering free Capitol Hill. They're calling it an autonomous zone. Now take a look at this image. They say, in rather weird (laughs) perspective, I guess, regime occupied Safeway. Police hold up here. And so there's this Safeway and it's regime occupied. We have this one, regime encampment off Broadway. Now take a look at this. For those that are are just listening, it's a map of the Seattle area of the Capitol Hill area. And it says Capitol Hill free zone, protester occupied Seattle. We can see the police department and it says captured regime East precinct, abandoned police station with doors left unlocked, LOL. We have this section right here. It says houses along Olive offering food and bathroom access to protesters and those marching. Now, this is ridiculously silly, and it's been mocked and ridiculed as such an absurd LARP. Now, sure, you can say they're joking, and maybe they are being a bit silly and they know it, but this is what they're actually doing. Okay, listen, this is usable intelligence for these people who have taken over these seven city blocks in Seattle. Let me show you some of the some of the posts that people have made. In this post, this person says, this uh, this is a tweet from Andy No, by the way, who's highlighting several other tweets and images. In one of the highlighted images, someone said the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Folks in Seattle have secured six blocks of city at the moment, barricaded it, and gotten local businesses and residents to agree to, well, disaffiliate from Seattle, basically. It's a flux state in the making. These may be exaggerations. This may be live action role play. But these people have been violent. They've been violent in the past. There's no reason to believe they aren't going to do so now. One of the key things they try to do is make you think that they're just dotering old fools playing a silly game. But if they're taking up arms and bulletproof vests for any reason, then things are escalating dangerously out of control. This person with the black flags in their name tweeted, Speaker at the autonomous zones advocating folks with firearms take shifts, defend the barricades, this is getting organized. She swore, by the way. So I can't, I, I, I can't tell you whether they're joking or not. But Jake Hanrahan, a real journalist who's actually covered actual conflict, said, quote, regime encampment. Oh, my God, get real. LARPing as if it's Syria. Yes. The reality of what's going on can be seen in this article from 770 KTTH. Seattle Antifa violence ruined a peaceful justice for George Floyd protest. This is May 30th, just over a week before what we're seeing now. And that's unfortunate. Everybody was advocating for reform. The reforms were possible. And these people just went nuts and are now discrediting everything. And that's what's really happening. Now a week on, far left extremists are occupying these streets. Look, it may be easily cleared out by the police, but the police have no community support, which is likely why they retreated. 12,000 complaints. Hey, man, it's like I said before, let the police do their thing. What I mean is, if you're not going to support them, actually, let me me give you the argument. If you got 100 people, I'm just giving you an example, and 10 people are screeching and the police, and the police come out to stop the screeching and the violence. If no one else supports the police, you have 90 votes to abstain and 10 votes to abolish the police. Guess what? Cops going to leave. And that's exactly what happened. They've abandoned the area. So maybe everyone there is happier for it. Great. So when the morality police come and start calling you names and the mob starts screeching at you like we've seen, don't be surprised. In this area, journalists tried to come and film and they were kicked out and told they weren't allowed in. No more freedom of movement. You got got to support the ideology if you actually want to come in. The propaganda is, well, it's, it's, it's expanding to say the least. Take a look at this story from The Guardian. Protesters across U.S. attacked by cars driven into crowds and men with guns. No. For the most part, the story is grossly exaggerating. And this is one of the big problems. This is not, look, you know, a lot of people don't like me talking about what's going on 
because they think that it's it's, it's making things worse. And, and, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, the other day on the, on the Timcast IRL podcast, we talked about how social media can accelerate things. I'm telling you these people are silly and they're LARPing, but to take it seriously, I'm not telling you that, you know, a, a rogue faction has taken over and they're like commandos coming from helicopters. It's a bunch of dumb people that are live action role playing, but that can escalate into something more serious. Now, this from The Guardian is what scares me. The image they use shows a truck. It slowed down. The man was dragged out of his car and he was beaten by protesters and he was released without charge because he wasn't trying to hit anybody. He actually tried to dodge people. He was just doing his job. He was a trucker. But the propaganda is getting intense. Now we can see this. This is where things do get worrying. All right. As the propaganda escalates, and the rioters take control of certain areas and burn things down. Fort Worth police drop rioting charges against protesters. Wow. I'm sorry. Uh, and they say protesters. These were rioters. Rioting charges, okay? That's what they said in the letter, that protesters had engaged in rioting and they were being let go. We saw a letter from the DA in Manhattan. They declined to prosecute protest arrests. Hey, but the police, yeah. The police are going to be hit with criminal charges over pushing a woman and some other instances. A lot of cops are now facing uh, serious charges in Buffalo, for instance. Those two cops who pushed the, the old man, Trump was tweeting about it earlier. They're facing second degree assault. 57 cops resigned in support of them. This is what you need to realize about what's happening in Seattle. When they say they won't prosecute protesters, but they will prosecute cops, both engaging in these, you know, co conflicted and, you know, these conflicts. You think cops are going to put their stick their neck out for this? No. Now, look, that cop shouldn't have pushed that woman for sure. But you're you're selective policing here. That's why I think the police backed off and abandoned this area of Capitol Hill in Seattle. Not because it's de-escalation, not because it's a new tactic, because it was a week long conflict between extremists who are just throwing things at them. And so they said, we out. People are complaining. Well, then they can do whatever they want. If you don't want us here, then we'll leave. So now if you live in the area and you're happy with that decision, well, then good for you. You got what you want. Hey, doesn't everybody win in this regard? The cops can leave and go do their thing. These activists want to disband the police. You want to create a, a uh, moral policing system of random people now asserting authority over your businesses. OK, Get, well, there you go. That's what's going to happen. I bet a lot of people are fleeing these cities to say the least. Right. Now take a look at this. This is where things start getting a bit more heavy. Man wore stolen police gear after helping to torch Minneapolis Police Department precinct charges, say. This is, this is the one where the conservatives start laughing and cheering because the look on this guy's face, man, I'm going to show you his face. And I'm, I'm building up the suspense here. But it's sad. It really is. Take a look at this dude in the mugshot. Can you see that? Look at that face, man. That's a face of someone who has been crying. Look at the swollen, puffy eyes. That dude's been crying for a long time. He's what, 23 years old. Check this out. Brendan Michael Wolf was fired June 3rd from his security job at Menards on University Avenue after the store learned of social media reports that identified him as a participant in rioting. A Menards employee called police after Wolf tried to enter the store later the day wearing stolen body armor and a law enforcement duty uh, belt and carrying a police baton, according to a complaint filed Monday in U.S. District Court. I think he may have posted a photo of it. I don't know what he was wearing. I mean, there's a photo of him on his Facebook where he's wearing body armor. It may be from before all this. I don't know. They said St. Pa Paul police found him in a vehicle several miles from the store, still wearing the body armor and duty belt, which was affixed with handcuffs, a baton, a knife, and an earpiece. His name was handwritten on duct tape attached to the back of his body armor, according to the complaint. In a police interview, he admitted he stoked the third precinct fire by pushing a wooden barrel into the flames. He also reportedly admitted to stealing several items. Apparently now he, oh, wow, look at this. Police searched his vehicle and found several items belonging to the police, including a riot helmet, a nine millimeter magazine, police radio, and police drug overdose kit. Wolf was charged in federal court Monday with aiding and abetting arson. Look at that face. The face of someone who realized he just ended his life. What a pathetic moron. I tell you, man, his Facebook page is publicly visible. I'm not going to show you images or anything, but I believe this is him, a secure, a security guard. He tweet he, his, his Facebook tag says silence becomes violence when we refuse guidance to those who seek it. 
And now he's going to spend a very, very long time in federal custody. This is not the Minneapolis police charging him. This is not the state of Minnesota. This is the federal government. He's it's 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 look, man, I know a lot of people are probably laughing at him and all that stuff. But think about how sad it is that you can be some dumb, blind, young person seeing stupid posts on social media. You show up and everyone's egging you on and cheering. And they're like, yeah, yeah. So you run in and you're laughing, thinking you're part of the group. It feels good. And you're in a dangerous mob. That's too bad. You got to think for yourself. But the sheeple, they don't know better. So this dude who's a moron clearly stokes the fire, steals stuff, and then walks around wearing it. How dumb do you got to be? He was playing revolutionary, just like the rest of these LARPers in Seattle who are allowed to get away with this. Let me tell you something. One of the problems we have in this country is that you let the LARPers do these things and then they do stupid things like burn down a police department. These people in Seattle are dumb young people who have never had consequences placed upon them. They do whatever they want and the cops back off and retreat. I don't think the cops you know, should engage in any kind of unlawful activity or anything like that. Or I, and I'm, I absolutely oppose authoritarianism and brutality. But there is still enforcement of the law. In this instance, perhaps exactly what needed to happen, uh, happen happened. That the people in the city don't support the police and don't want them. And there you go. Welcome to a, a democratic institution. If the police have no support, the police will leave. And you get exactly what you want. A generation of young people who have never been disciplined, who think they can go wherever they want, do whatever they want, take whatever they want. And then one of them gets dumb enough to go into a police precinct, steal stuff and walk around wearing it because he didn't know better. Well, now he's getting he's, he's going to be made an example of. The problem is teaching him by sending him to prison for a couple decades isn't going to change anything for the rest of the generation. Some people might see it and say, oh, man, that's worrisome. I don't I don't want to go to jail, you know. But too many dumb, stupid people are taking it seriously. They don't understand what real revolution is like, and they're pretending. They don't understand how good they have it. They are spoiled children complaining. I, th- I mean, just think about it, right? Kids, you know, imagine a kid growing up with a rich parent who gives them everything they want. And they have a temper tantrum all day. And the mom just keeps going, oh, oh, what do you want, honey? Please stop yelling at me. So they buy them literally everything. And you congratulations, created a spoiled brat generation that doesn't want to do work and wants you to pay for it and then goes and burns things down and thinks they're going to get away with it. It's not how the world works. What you're seeing right now is a letter from Josh Hawley. He's asking Bill Barr to investigate the uh, uh, unequal treatment under the law. We'll see where this goes. It's a very fascinating letter. He points out that in California, the Supreme Court ruled against churches, saying it was unclear whether the state was treating them unequally. Now, based on the protests, there's no question. Bill Barr needs to uh, launch a civil rights investigation as to why these states are treating different ideologies uh, while they're treating them differently under the law. Sorry, we can't have that. Not in this country. Now, over here on Twitter, we can see something quite funny. Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey himself retweeting a video glorifying violence from a woman who's saying that even if they burned everything to the ground, it wouldn't be enough. And you're lucky they, they are, they're not looking for revenge, just equality. That's glorifying violence. You got to love the double standard there, right? This is where we're headed. It's not just about private sector, public sector. It's happening everywhere. That's why I bring up this last little bit. You've got the police now in several different jurisdictions treating certain ideologies as more immune, in a sense, than churchgoers. Inequality under the law. Now you've got Twitter, which will censor the president and flag him for glorifying violence. And then the founder himself posts a video, retweets it, of a woman saying, F your buildings, glorifying violence and justifying it. Now, retweets aren't aren't necessarily endorsements, fine. But the post still isn't flagged. Shouldn't it be if Donald Trump's going to be? Double standards, man. Rules for thee, but not for me. So listen, let's wrap all this up. Do I think it's the end of the world in Seattle? No, I think it's a bunch of dumb kids LARPing. And this thing, things like this happen very often. But you combine this with all the other stories we've seen and that, that moron, you know, trying to burn down a police department and stealing stuff. And these people are dumb, but that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. And it doesn't mean they won't accidentally start some kind of revolution when the actual revolutionaries use them as cover to engage in more overt acts. And we've seen it. We've seen some horrifying stuff, man. That van in in Oakland that popped open the the side panel door, rifle comes out. You know what I'm talking about. 
But anyway, listen, I'll leave it there. I don't know how this will play out. I, I, I assume at, at, at some point these protesters will just leave. Nothing will happen. Maybe not, though. I'll have some more segments coming up for you at 6 p.m. over at TimCast.net. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all then.